everyone and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. Like, hello. This review is going to be fantastic. Man, you are totally bombing me out. Whoa. Ah, uh, uh, an awesome brony reviewer, Silver Quill. That would be Grand High Duke and Champion of Burping Battle Competition 19 Dickity 2. Thank you. That happened. And <laughs> with a special guest reviewer, Sugardov from the Highland Bronies. Dudes, how's it hanging? Oh, this is going to be one of those, isn't it? Yeah, I expect it. Oh my gosh. And today we're going to be reviewing episode 7 of season 5 of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, overall episode number 98. Make new friends but keep Discord, written by Natasha Levinger. All right, so since the last episode I realized that making the synopsis or talking about the synopsis doesn't really work out all that well, we're going to jump right into uh, uh, opinions and what we thought of this episode because this is the long-expected, long-awaited uh, return of our favorite Lord of Chaos and Disharmony, voiced by the awesome John Delancey. And it's an episode that people were looking forward to because something else arrived with it. So, what did you guys think of this episode? And as always, I support uh, inverted alphabetical order as always. And since we have Sugardov here, and her name is uh, before Silvers, haha! For the first time, Silvers, you're gonna, have, you're gonna have to wait your turn because it's ladies first on this one. So. <laughs> What did you guys think of this episode? I enjoyed it, mainly for lots of little references here and there. It was just one of those giggle fests. I love giggle fest. <laughs> well, that was quicker than I expected. <laughs> so hard to find words. You're like, ah, oh, there's so many funnies. Which one do I pick? It usually takes us like a good five minutes each to talk about the things that we like and the things that we don't like, but... Uh, I'm a woman. I'm to the point. <laughs> you said it, not we. Um, uh, I'm, not, I'm not touching that with the ten foot pole. <laughs> you wouldn't dare. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like it. <laughs> oh, well. What did you think, Silver? I'm probably in the minority in that I wasn't as laughing as much as other people. And I know that sounds weird because it dragged in the middle for me. The minute we got to the gala, uh, I was like, oh, this is going to be great. There's the smooths. There's, uh, there's Discord. There's all this stuff that's going to happen. Oh, Discord's going to spend the whole time just getting really jealous. That kind of feels like he's become, uh, impotent. <laughs> Is really all I can describe, and I know all the flutter court shippers are going to cry foul at that. <laughs> they don't want him to be impotent. Oh no! <laughs> uh, but yep, this uh, is going to be one of those episodes, all right? But those episodes get brace yourself, Norman. <laughs> but it's like there was the great humor for me was at the beginning, where Discord was going around town. Once the gala started up, suddenly I felt it actually was the same. Uh, issue I encountered with the Equestria games. You have this grand venue with all these stories running on the Crusaders first party, uh, Twilight's efforts in planning it, Celestia's there. And really we're just supposed to focus on Fluttershy, Discord, and a tree hugger. It's like, <laughs> oh, there's, there's so much else going on. Oh my God. This is, you're, I feel like I'm being a party pooper, but I just couldn't laugh as much. What did you think, Norman? I, how do I put this? I agree with what Silver says about the part at the gala being slow, and I do understand why and where it went wrong. But for me, this episode is just full of fun. The way I look at it is like this. Discord has never had a friend before. He does not know the concept of friendship. So for him to have a friend like Fluttershy and him... Well, Fluttershy being his first friend, he doesn't know how to feel when he has to share. And, well, being a person who is very, what is the one looking for, selfish, 
he doesn't know how to share. And when it comes to near the end, there's part where he's looking for attention, waving his hand or just being up on stage trying to tell a joke that nobody's laughing at and trying to make Fluttershy jealous with having the smooths along. And I see what you're doing there. I understand the way that you're doing is wrong, but by golly, you're trying your best. And in the end, you learn your lesson. And that's the most important part. How about you, James? I am actually going to be on Silver's side on this episode, actually. I thought it was uh, going to be alone. I, I, thought, I thought it was going to be alone, but I agree with Silver. Something is missing when we get to the gala. Mm-hmm. As, as soon as we arrive there, it's like they take the comedy, uh, the comedy dial and then they put it down to five, maybe, where there is still a bit of creativity when it comes to the humor, but it's still not delivered properly. Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny. It's funny to think that they have taken this character that is Discord, and he's like, I always, uh, uh, I always supported the idea of taking Discord and redeeming him. Because out of all the villains that MLP has had, he is the least evil, despite the way he looks. Um, I mean, he, his uh, ultimate scheme is just to have fun. Uh, so, it, it, it was inevitable that they were going to nerf him sooner or later. I don't think they nerfed him properly, though, with this episode. And, you know, the thing is that I was, a, I was afraid of how this episode, this episode was going to be tackled. Ever since John Delancey uh, mentioned that he was recording something for MLP, and that it involved Discord getting jealous over a friend that Fluttershy was getting. Mm-hmm. And I know that getting preconceived ideas about an episode is not a good thing. However, I was like, well, let's see what they are going to do with it. Let's see what they are going to do about it. What they do is the most telegraphed, predictable, and, and like, callable, if you can use that as a word, uh, plot and development that you can expect from such a storyline. That the only uniqueness when it comes to this episode is the fact that one of the characters is being played by John Delancey, and that's where all the appeal is. I mean, if, if, if Discord wasn't such an appealing character, this episode would have fallen on the, on the meh category, when in, in this case, it only falls on the, it was okay, uh, category. And that's as far as I'm gonna say it. This episode was okay. Hmm. Okay. Alright. Uh, Alright, uh, so. Jinx? Oh? I'm Jinxie Norman. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you, you owe me a soda then. <laughs> uh, you, you can't talk. Someone punch him. Ah. I, I want to punch him, but he's like miles or miles away. I cannot <laughs> punch him. Um, but okay, from now on, we're going to discuss the entire episode in detail. So if you guys don't want to get it spoiled any further, uh, stop listening to this and move to, uh, move to the episode, watch it and then come back. But if you don't care about the spoilers, just go ahead and keep listening to us. So, okay, how do you guys want to tackle this one? Do you want to go scene by scene, or shall we discuss the themes and what this episode is bringing to us? I think themes are the way to go. I mean, we can't dissect every theme, mm-hmm. but... We, we can just jump into scenes where we find appropriate or inappropriate. <laughs> to be honest, I think we should start with what we what seems to be the biggest issue here, which is the, the one that seems to divide everyone, which is the humor. Hmm... And uh, how how the slapstick and the and the comedy works for some, and it doesn't work for others. Hmm. Well, I I feel like we have been uh, oversharing sugar. What would you like to do? Mm-hmm. My brain went blank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All of it, none of it, both of them. Humor is a good <laughs> place to start. I, as the as the person that says that she loved this episode for the humor, yes, let's go with the humor. Mm-hmm, okay. Uh, Alrighty. Let's go with the humor. Well, I think we should start with the pop culture references that are in this episode. And boy, can we spend that entire day talking about the pop culture references oh, alone. Oh, yeah, I mean, okay, here's the, here's the problem with pop culture references in comedy or in shows. They die. The, the reason why people enjoy My Little Pony is because the jokes that they tell are timeless. But as time goes on, they insert references that people might not get or that dies. A good example was the, whatchamacallit, um, Winter's Coming, 
or the grumpy cat pony. Those mm. those things like people say, oh, that's just so old, just so on. But in this one, in this episode, to be more specific, I don't think they can die out because who doesn't know about Kojima and his box? Who doesn't know about the comedians or the stand-up comedy that Discord uh, mimic? Those kind of pop culture reference, they don't die out that fast. Well, let's also keep in mind that uh, this show has also referenced One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, The Big Lebowski. Uh, let's see, I know there's a lot other references that have been coming up. Oh, the Shining Lord of the this Ring, one. Oh, yeah. Lord of the Rings okay. also. Yeah. Lord of the Rings. So I'm not against pop culture references I don't consider bad on arrival. But I think that's only half of Discord's humor. Mm-hmm. For me, the funniest bits were him going around town, scaring the Crusaders, <laughs> you know, just appearing and causing ponies distress, g- tricking Pinky into a into packing up the entire sugar cube <laughs> corner, and then he doesn't want any of the kicks. Dick boo, bra, dick boo. But appearing the, inside Spike's bed. That 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 one. That what I have to say. What? I was so happy for Spike to have a room of his own, but he might need to. He might need to stay with Twilight for just a little bit after that. I yeah. need an adult. <laughs> I am an adult. And the cookie. There is an adult. aspect of the humor that a lot of people overlook is that when we first heard about the Brony fandom taking off, the average age range was thirteen to thirty year olds and mm-hmm. the males. <laughs> and from my experience, because I was early twenties, late teens when the show aired, most of the fans were of the age range that we were into a lot of the things that are now being referenced. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, so it's um, memorable to that generation. Uh, you, old. we are all old. Mm-hmm. Um, You're all old. I, I'm still echo. I need to bring bring up the pop culture references that you were talking about, Norman. Uh, when you say sometimes they will make a reference that feels aged or anything, the writers in this show are smart enough to pick something that they know is going to be timeless. I mean, something tells me that in 20 years' time, people are going to remember their grumpy cat and winter is coming. Not just as memes, but as part of the culture that is nowadays. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I did bring it up on the Thanks for the Memories episode review when we were talking about that meme in particular. Mm-hmm. I, I remind you that it started as a book, then became a TV show, and finally turned into a meme. It was something else before anything else. The grumpy cat one, that is a different, uh, different sort of animal. But mm-hmm. it's still kind of something that is going to be remembered. Everybody remembers the Star Wars kid or um, Ask a Ninja or any of those very early. Everybody remembers Trogdor, a so, meme that existed before YouTube was even created. Oh, that was so, just on a flash on that website called Homestar Runner. Like, I still remember that. Oh, God, that so, was fun. So it is, it is part of, uh, it's part of the pop culture references that we have today. And that's, the, the writers of the show are smart enough that they know how to include them. However, I think that with this episode, they may have gone a bit over, overboard, and they are playing the card of, oh, it's Discord, it doesn't need to make sense oh. way too much. Because when they are in Sugar Cube Corner, and we see the, the Metal Gear Solid box, and the exclamation mark on top of the box, yeah, okay, that's, that's funny. That's, mm-hmm. that's funny. What is it doing there, though? What is the context? Was Discord sneaking in? Was uh, inside a video game or something? <laughs> no, it's just there because, oh, it's Discord. Like, I appreciate the reference. I like the reference. But I am not I am not such a hypocrite to say, oh, I think it's perfect, it's flawless. No, I think it doesn't really make a lot of sense that the box is in there, despite how much Discord is the spirit of chaos. Well, true. I, I don't know. I mean, to me, I enjoy that scene. One, it's one of the references that I love. And Kojima... I enjoy it too! <laughs> I, I enjoy it too, and I like that Kojima liked it as well, but I am like, what is this doing here? Like, it, it looks like, like they were like, mm, we're missing a gag there, what are we going to do? Oh, we know, we're not gonna put Discord as Sam Fisher from Splinter Cell, nah, that is too obscure, we need something a bit more, more popular. Um, uh, oh, we know, let's stress Discord as, uh, Ezio from Assassin's Creed, <laughs> that is popular, yeah, but that video game is very violent. Mm. Oh, we know. Let's put this Metal Gear Solid box. 
Yeah, that can work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And brownies, oh brownies, brownies. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll make a meme out of it. Yeah, I haven't seen a single thing regarding the Metal Gear Solid box and Discord on their people since the episode arrived. Well, so, really, to be honest, I have no idea what is that box doing there. Well, <laughs> and what was the purpose know, of it the... could be a studio inside joke. It's <laughs> true that. I don't know. I am making, a, I am kind of making a big deal out of it, but it's mm-hmm. just that when you're making a pop culture reference, it has to carry a lot of weight and it has to carry a lot of, uh, meaning. Uh, so far, that joke has the same power as putting the troll face on a puff of smoke. <laughs> just because. It's like, why? Because of reference, it's popular. I wouldn't go that far, because if that's the case, the grumpy cat on the pony is a, well, why? Just reference. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. That's why I put the box at the same level as the grumpy cat on the pony's cutie mark. It's timeless, it's that, but what is is it doing there? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's just, I, I... Okay, we can overthink this as much as we want, and we won't get a satisfied answer. So I'm just gonna say, it's Discord. But to me, the funny... yeah, that, but that's the thing. That's what I'm going at. Yeah, but they are the... using the, the they are using the it's Discord car way too much. Well, it's Discord. We can't say much. But to me, the thing that the comedy that works here is well, the first few moments, like before the box or after the box, I don't know, um, where well, we got one Discord appearing in Spike's bed and freaking him out. That his, was funny. Yeah, and his that eyes... That was really funny. His or eyes, when he... Yeah. Uh, yeah, his eyes turning into the mirrors, or yeah. when he goes to his house. Yeah. That was a good moment as well. Those were yeah. opportune moments, or funny scenes. For example, he washed dishes to make them dirty. <laughs> Who would have thought? I would have. It saves time. <laughs> it seems more efficient when you think about it. No, it doesn't. And There's does, one um, comedy moment that we're all missing, and it's Pinky's perception filter. <laughs> oh, How is yes, she able yes. to recognize Discord in any guise? How is she able to recognize the screen? Like just that fourth wall moment was enough for everyone in that my was... house to be squeaking like a little happy children. <laughs> that was the best moment of comedy of the entire episode, in, uh, in my opinion. Because it was, uh, not only it was funny, but it does make sense even from a technical point of view. Because when she grabs the camera, you can actually hear the microphone going glung, 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 glung. You know what this means, right, James? That, yeah, Kikas King's Tumblr, the one about <laughs> ponies in real life and all that, that is canon. Yeah. <laughs> Behind the scene ponies, that is canon. <laughs> Yay. I mean, this, when, look at the moment. Like, is... Discord's hiding in a box. He clearly doesn't want to immediately approach Pinky. He's clearly intimidated by her on some level. <laughs> And yet, within a second, without even looking, she's like, Discord's there. Like any other pony, we go, oh, it's a box, we'll ignore it. And she's like, nope, Discord. I mean, <laughs> how does she know? Because, ironic, because as we say, don't question it, it's Pinky. Yes, yes. Then again, playing that card that I am starting to get really grinded about. It's like, mm, okay, it's them. Can you please give them something more to work with? Mm-hmm. No? All right. I don't I guess mind. we just have to take these things at face value. Well, I don't mind. I think there was much. a, I think there was a season one episode regarding this issue or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. I don't watch season one anymore. That is like the worst season ever. Wow. God. <laughs> I'm Thank joking. So much. But I am, of the, course, joking. I think we're missing another joke here where Discord's mail got lost or is really slow. Why? Because the mailman can't decide where his house is. And I, I, the mailman is a bro, man. He he works hard and <laughs> neither rain nor sleep. That is one hell of a special talent. Yeah, uh, you know, I kind of feel for this guy right there because I also have problems with my mail. <laughs> the street where I live has the same name of the town that I live next to. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. it's like I live in the Wetorbega Street next to the town Wetorbega. Uh, so, you have no idea how difficult it is to get a shipment from Amazon to arrive right on the first, wow. on the first go. It's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> but, nah, I, I think we covered most of the comedy aspects of the episode. Well, I mean, uh, we, no, we... no, not really. We, we covered the comedy before we arrived to the gala, but it is when we arrived to the gala that where I am starting to see that the comedy fails. And I want to talk about that. I'm pretty mm. sure that Silver wants to talk about it as well. Maybe. Hmm. But actually, there is one thing I want to say about the mailman. 
He dead. He dead. <laughs> oh, he totally dead. He got taken by one of those flying jellyfish from the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. I, I, mean, I, 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 I always have said, you know, I don't think we'll ever see an on-screen mortality in this show. Well, this might be the closest we ever get. Oh, I think Discord will just save him off-screen. Implications. Implications, oh. You're, you're, There's going to be a scene in a few episodes' time where this creature appears randomly in the real world, dumps the male pony, <laughs> and goes on. He, he dumps him covered in slime. Oh, you. That thing has tentacles, you know? Oh, God, no. Oh, but... the schoolgirls beware. Oh, God. Bonnard! Gala! Gala! Uh, yeah, but then we get to the gala, and to the humor in the gala, and... At the gala. You know, at the gala, with no funnies... We'll never laugh at all. And well, this is... Well, to me, this is where the dial of the comedy goes down, like I said before. A bit, a bit. And, well, introducing uh, and the smooth. I waited so long for this moment. Was it everything you imagined? I don't know what I imagined, but I was like, that's okay, that's not okay, that's kind of cool. Ooh, we did a thing. <laughs> Ah, yeah. the moment they announced, like, I waited for ages for a G1 reference. I waited all the way to T-Rex for a G1 reference. And when I heard that T-Rex was in the show, I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, <laughs> G1 reference. And then the comic books, twinkle-eyed ponies. You, oh, I've been so excited for so long that when I heard they were announcing the smooths, I was like, oh no, oh no, what are they going to do? You know what? Before we continue with the comedy, let's take on this enthusiasm and talk about the smooth. Yeah, because I got no idea what the smooth is. You know, I um I did watch the original movie and all that. I also was worried about what they were going to do with the smooth. So I'm new to this. Please explain to me what smooth is, because to me he looks like a blob, oh. like slimer. you know what? You know what? Diane can tell you better. Diane and Silver may tell you better than than I could how the smooth was in Generation One, because I watched the movie once, <laughs> but I don't remember much of it. I don't remember oh, much I of it. I watched it, but... it when it was new. <laughs> <laughs> so please, please enlighten us. Oh, where do we even begin? Well, basically. Uh, yeah, Quill, you go first. This will be fun to hear it's someone that's wiser than me. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, well, then, can we get him? I, I don't have that much. Uh, <laughs> the smooth is basically the closest you're ever going to get to an eldritch horror in a kid's cartoon. Yes. Uh, right. Unless you have, like, Bowling with Cthulhu. <laughs> no, seriously, but, he is absolutely right. <laughs> well... He is. I mean, basically, the Smooths was this creation of a, a band of witches. And it's meant to be this purely unstoppable force unless you have uh, a, a toy, a merchandise that is specifically introduced to combat it. Yes, I'm, I'm totally going meta here. <laughs> yeah, I'm Bas- pretty sure they introduced them for the toy sales, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so basically, the Smooths was just this mound of gelatinous uh, eyeballs and, and grape jelly that mm-hmm. covered everything. But much like Yogg-Zathoth, <laughs> uh, it just doesn't care. You can't reason with it. You can't, uh, you can't convince it. You can't make friends with it. You can only fight it, and that's really a lost cause. So basically, the pon- they're doomsday then. They're Smooth doomsday. was wonderful yeah. because like, he was a sentient glob of gloop with the best singing voice you've ever heard. And anything he just got bigger and bigger the more he consumed the bigger he got the more he covered the more he could go on and anything mm. it touched he took away its essence of happiness that's a big deal and i when i they were saying smooth is coming back i was like like if these ponies touch the smooth is that going to happen to them or is this what they're going to keep in i mean this was one of the biggest horrors of the first generation there was a movie dedicated to this guy <laughs> okay do you remember and- ghostbusters 2 the slime and all that. Uh-huh. Pretty yeah, much that. That, that really? was the smooth in real life, yeah. Or in Pretty much that. Or basically what they had in real life. Okay, so the smooth is something like the Ghostbusters where if it touches you, it feeds off negative energy. But in the cartoon version, it just sucks all happiness and leaves you a dead shell. Yep. Well, Even the it, sparkles it, are gone. Okay. 
you basically just become a really unpleasant person. It's like being on 4chan. <laughs> uh, it's less it's less icky though. Okay. Yeah, so, it, and it comes off faster. Like what's odd about the movie is like this is the first time you're introduced to this character. You're introduced to this being called the Smooth, and yet within the movie you're told that there are other instances of its creation, and you're like, oh wow! So this is not just a one-off character. This is a sentient species hmm. that is created to envelop the what's what's around it, and once it's sucked dry, the happiness of the land it just settles there. So, uh, sugar. What are the difference between this version of the Smooths and the earlier generation? Well, we can start with the basics. There's the colour, there's the lack of singing voice, and there's the fact that it's happy. <laughs> the Smooths is designed to suck happiness. But this Smooth in G4 was the happiest glob of goo I've ever seen. I mean, oh, look, shiny, I want it. I mean, that is just the cutest thing I've ever seen. But I like that the one thing they kept, which I'm glad they did, is the more he consumed, the greater he got. And that there was a level of harmony required to settle him. Like, the, like Smooth reacted to music in the first movie, and he reacted to pleasant sounds in the show. And it's a very subtle thing that they kept, but it's a really pleasant thing that they've kept. What else do we need to know? Because others, besides the colour, I'm sure, like James said, it was grape, or was it silver? Say it was grape. Orange, you know, grape, purple, something like that. So yeah, grape, purple. grape jelly. Yeah, grape jelly. Grape jelly. So, he said grape jelly. Yeah. So huge, huge jelly, bro. <laughs> so we had we have huge jelly. Where was huge jelly during this entire episode? <laughs> this would have been his jam. <laughs> oh yeah. But so from green to purple, sorry, from purple to green, and a top hat and a bow tie, lack of eyes, happy. Okay. So. Uh, Sugar, what do you think overall as a G1 fan? And you too, Silver, what do you think of the changes? Are you okay with it or no? Ladies first. I love that they chose to have a G1 character. But it's so radically different that they might as well have just picked a new species for all the difference it would have made. I mean, they're going, hey, we're going to shout out to you guys because we've mentioned it in the comics, we've mentioned it with T-Rex. And it's like, but you've taken one of the biggest icons of the first generation and just completely flipped it on its head. I mean, I was so hyped, I was so terrified about this episode because this was the reason I was watching this episode and it's like, it's so radically different. I was a little bit disappointed. Hmm, all right. Silva? There's no rule that uh, you have to just simply replicate a G1 character into the current setting. Tyrek was a much different uh character than his G1 counterpart. But my thing with the schmooz, and I have to be really a stickler because I hear a lot of people say schmooz. <laughs> Lose the CH. It's smooth, like ooze. But... Like smoothie. Smooth. Smoothie. Smoothie. There you smoothie. go. Smooth moves and he's made of ooze. You've been hit by, you've been struck by a smooth criminal. <laughs> dun 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 Okay. But, but this is, this is where the gala starts to fall apart for me. You have Discord there to cause all this chaos. You have all these ponies there trying to pursue their various goals for him to interfere with. Did they need the smooths in this case? What, mm-hmm. I mean, great to see a character to borrow a, to borrow an insight from Dr. Wolf. A dark force could possess the smooths and cause it to act like its G1 counterpart, even change the color to something darker down the line. Uh, so that is not, uh, the door may not be closed on that. Or maybe it is, and hey, no big deal in my eyes. But the smooths was not really needed for Discord to wreak havoc on the gala. In fact, Given the ease with which it was uh, overcome, maybe it was a. It almost feels like, oh, is that it? Come on, you didn't say the. You didn't say the line. No one said the line. You guys know which line I'm talking about. I'm nope. lost here. Nothing can stop the smooths. Oh, how did I miss out on that opportunity? <laughs> I, I, I feel so alone. Ah, uh, the main number, and I missed it. 
I'm so old. I do I'm so Rory. Uh, I'm Rory and Sadri and Ron. But, okay, I mean, I can see a point here where Miss Opportunity with the Smooth. Here's an idea. What, what do you guys think if Discord invited Scorpion? Um, that would have been so cool. <laughs> I would have been fine if Discord invited himself, you know. Have both of them in the Dumb and Dumber costumes. <laughs> oh, that would have been brilliant. How to the only reason one? they took yeah. the smooth. Yeah. You know what? May I say my piece reason. about? May I say my you piece go. about this smooth before we go any further? Mm-hmm. Uh, when they brought in Tirek, um, actually, no, 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 before that, all the way back in 2012, I made a comparison between MLPG one and MLPG four to see which uh, one was the superior one. And I thought that uh, G4 was superior in almost every aspect except one. And that was the villains. Uh, I thought that the villains in Generation 1, and I still think this, are really badass, really cool, really interesting, and way, way better than the ponies themselves. Is that if there was a reason for a boy to watch MLP back in the day, it was the bad guys. Uh, I will say, even as far as anyone involved watching MLP, both boy, boys and girls, it will be the bad guys, because the bad guys were interesting. Um, so I was always wondering what they were going to do with the smooths. And I was of the mentality that they that they should do the, the whole eldritch horror, oh my god, let's turn it into a Cothonian uh, uh, Jogshoth or something that Lovecraft might have come up with. And um, bring him all over Ponyville to destroy everything. Let, let's do that. But the more that I thought about it, the more I realized, well, it doesn't have a place in this show the way that it is put together. Um, because, like, the horror on this show comes from other sources. Um, let's say that Fluttershy Panic Attacks, Flutterbad, or the, the Stair Master, or, or any of those episodes, almost always involving Fluttershy, <laughs> uh, is where the horror comes comes in. Uh, it doesn't usually come from the villains. I will say that Tyrek is a pretty dorky-looking bad guy, and Discord is more fun than anything. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I, I thought maybe they should do something different with the with the smooths. Maybe they shouldn't turn him into a into a Call of Cthulhu Cthonian character. And what they did with him in this in this generation, I think it's all right. I mean, it's not perfect. It's not ooh, that's awesome, because they only use him as a literary resource. I mean, he's just there to mess over with the gala. Mm-hmm. He's not there for any other reason. So he's he's a tool. That's what this moose is. He's a tool. He's not a character. He's not a villain. Then again, he was kind of a tool in the Generation 1 movie, but in this episode even more so than than in the movie itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, as for me, when I think of the smooth here, I remember seeing images of him when I was younger or when I saw um, the... Brony documentary by Saber Spark. What was it? Yeah, I think so. And I seen them explaining who his character is and whatnot. And yeah, okay, I get a, I get a general idea of the smooth is dangerous. I get that. And here I see him in this G4 reiteration and I see how, well, him getting to going to the gala, having fun, you know, it's Discord's plus one. So I'm just guessing he's a very lovable slime creature thingy. He doesn't really want to hurt anyone. He doesn't really... Well, let's just say he's a fish out of water kind of person. He knows what he wants and he goes gets it. And if it's on a pony, he doesn't care. Personal space, he knows not about it. Like James said, he's been used as a tool. I mean, the only reason why this court just invited him is just to make Fluttershy jealous of him. When we reach the lesson in this episode, I'll highlight it, but as we carry on with the smooths, he is just, well, background character kind of situation. (laughs) Can't say much. I kind of hate that that's the point of the smooths in this episode, that he is just oh, he's just that guy that happens to be the invitee. He could have been a background pony and it would have made no difference. He was there so that Treehugger could play off and show that, oh, she does know rare creatures. But you mm-hmm. could have done that with just about any creature. I mean, True. you've taken the opportunity, taken a potential reference, and then gone, 
Splat. There you go. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, you could have added Prince Blue Blood for goodness sake. Or even, you know what? Princess Luna. You see, they wouldn't have added any of those characters ah, because then they'll have to skip on the Shining reference. Ah, true, true. True, true, true. But um, that's the smooths. What else can we talk about besides the smooths? Celestia's so disregard for control. <laughs> oh, that's... Actually, that's, I was about to say the same thing. Everybody's talking, oh, Trilestia's canon now. Not really. No, like, she's got a sense of humour. That's brilliant. I, I like the she, idea that she had, was the laughter pony all along. She but kind of almost like, run out of bucks to give, though, because she's like, come on, the night is young, and Twilight is, in the meantime, having a mental breakdown number, number 37. <laughs> okay, here, I, I can... I don't know if this is hit canon or not, but I can... Easily explain this. Celestia, for having lived for almost over a thousand years, been involved in so many galas that she is, well, bored of them. The last gala that they had, had the main six wreak havoc. And now Discord's reform, good. Celestia knows, like, okay, let me invite Discord. And here's where you, I don't know who explained this, but Celestia has a master plan for almost everything. Like Celestia, I, Celestia is a big fan of the Batman Gambit. Yeah, and like, how do I put this? In season one, she sent uh, three or two invitations for to Twilight. She and uh, her plus one, and they all fight over it. I don't know if there's a lesson there or not, but well. That's, that's it. Uh, Celestia sent two letters, maybe to teach Twilight a lesson. And there's a, there's a lot of things. Like, I, I think fans have already said that Celestia have a master plan for almost everything. And it's, it's kind of funny how the fans have been so slow in the Arctic when it comes to pinning Celestia as a character. Because, I mean, guys, it is pretty obvious from the very beginning that Celestia always has a plan. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like, it's, it's not until it's not until the plan fails that she uh, that she is completely out of control. Like, yeah, let's say on uh, no, can't uh, But but I this, mean that, that will be that will be one of the moments where Celestia didn't have any plan and her only source of action uh, her only course of action will be to fight? blast it with mm. la- lasers. Yeah, um, but here's the, here's the how thing. well that one turned out. Is is it does she know this would happen? Does she do it on purpose or? Was it- I think Celestia knows at this point that there is not, uh, there is not, there is nothing bad going on on the land at the moment. So she's like, you know what? I'm going to have a little fun. I'm going to bring the- in Discord. If that's the case, the- to Celestia must have planned everything with Celestia going to visit the Breezies and knowing that Tree Hargo would be there, would be there to, well, interact with Fluttershy and they hit it off as well, best friends. Oh, well, I, I, I gotta really understand. I got to Go chime in on this. I think we assign Celestia too much knowledge. I mean, we're giving too much credit to yeah, her. I mean, that, that's the thing. Like, I don't agree with that much, but everything that's discussed here, wow, I don't agree, mm. but wow. Hannah, silver. continue, your Silver, I, continue, please. I don't think she planned it down to the minutia that she would arrange for Fluttershy to meet Tree Hugger and do this and do, th- and they do this and that and invite each other, Discord to get us ticket at that time. That's basically trying to make Celestia God, which I know a lot of fans like to do. Well, isn't she a god? <laughs> no. The god of the sun. No, I, no. actually, what? no. She's the person who moves it, but I think we've established that even unicorns can do that. Mm-hmm. At this Unique. point, she doesn't I'm, I'm have anything to... of goddess in her. Huh? At, this point in, at this point in the show and in the comics, she doesn't have any godly, anything godly well, uh, to her. Uh, sugar, Diane, sugar, sorry, sorry, Sugar, what are you saying? I was going to say, I'm starting to understand why Mad Munchkin calls her Princess Exposition now. Uh, <laughs> not even but, now, uh, any, not even anymore, because the map has taken that role now. Yep. <laughs> Which is good, I think. I, I mm-hmm. think she should I, be. I agree, I agree. But, but we, uh, sorry, go ahead. Well, my, the point I'm trying to get at, Celestia invited Discord because she knew somehow he would shake things up. Mm-hmm. And she okay. has lived long enough to know that a, a little... Chaos at a gala is not the end of the world. 
<laughs> I think that's I think that's the thing she tries to impart to not take things so, so seriously. Mm-hmm. And but but then funny enough, we as fans do take things very seriously <laughs> and start inventing ways that she to say she's endangering or okay. some somehow failing others. Mm-hmm. Hang on a minute. Are you saying here that Celestia is trying to give the same lesson that Dr. Seuss did with Cat in the Hat? <laughs> Sometimes right. a little chaos and a little habit is okay if you have a bit of control over it. Yeah. Is that much. what you're uh, pl- Yeah. You know what? I agree with you. But Although she, she didn't have Mike, My- Mike Myers doing a... <laughs> oh, good. Case. We don't need well, that. Well, that is good. On the, that goes on the advantage of this episode, right? I mean, yes, we are not going to give credit to that POS movie. Yes. Oh, but here's, here's the thing that I'm also thinking. If there is a lesson here, who is it targeted to? The, I think the it's targeted six? to Twilight. <laughs> okay, but Stop if, being so uptight. Have fun. The night is young. Yeah, but okay. Here's another thing. Um... I'm just going to jump to that scene because the this, the lesson here is for Discord where Discord is okay to have many friends. It's okay to have different kind of friends. And Fluttershy says, if you had a friend who is into chaotic magic and you go talk to the person, is it okay for me to be jealous? And Discord says... Um, I I forgot, but the, it's no. Something... Is that the, the lesson here is that uh, it, 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 you are not going to lose a friend if you suddenly see them hanging out with other person that has a common interest with them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So Although yeah, the lesson would be aimed towards Discord. I think the lesson is hippies suck in any dimension. <laughs> <laughs> um, you I, know, I, 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 go on, go on, Silva. I, I guess I haven't really talked about Tree Hugger as a character. Oh yeah, we haven't talked oh, about Tree Hugger. Sh- shall as a we talk about Tree Hugger? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't, mean, talk about Tree Hugger? I don't mean to derail what we've already, uh, what we've been talking about, but a Tree Hugger, you either love her or you don't. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is, and to be honest, I didn't really enjoy her until the very end where suddenly she wasn't just, oh my god, I'm such a hippie. I mean, come on. <laughs> I read the rarity micro comic mm-hmm. with like the two greatest uh hippie characters I've seen in a long time, Wheatgrass and Flexi. Oh, wow. Yep. <laughs> but the reason they were so great is that they had an uptight, prim and proper pony like Rarity to play off of. Treehugger's not really playing off Discord until the very end. True. Not only true. that, but they also did have a conflict. They were losing their farm. They didn't want to lose that, so that that way you engage with them. For all we know, Tree Hugger doesn't have any conflicts. She is the stereotypical 1960s, 1970s hippie. Well, here's the thing. We got no idea what Tree Hugger's motivations are. Because in the comic, we know uh, Hayseed and Flexseed. Was it? Uh-huh. Well, uh, Flexseed and Wheatgrass. Yes, Flexseed and Wheatgrass. We know their motivations. We know their conflicts. We know... We... we we relate to their problems. We want them to succeed. It flexes, and, it flexes out the characters. That's yeah, what yeah, it mean. flexes out the characters. With, yes. with Tree Hugger, they don't do much. And what you say, uh, Silver, is true. They do not put her motivations on the table until later on. Well, and I spend, I, I spend the entire episode suspicious of her. Because, well, I, okay, j- guys, those eyebrows, mm-hmm. those are Bowser eyebrows right there. <laughs> those are pushy, evil overlord, uh, the Baron Harkonnen from Dune kind of eyebrows. And I was looking at those eyebrows and I was like, she's going to turn out to be evil, isn't she? She's <laughs> going to be a monster or she's going to she... be a creature passing for a pony and all that. She, there is there is some deception going on. You mean here. like Ganon? Uh, something like, well, that, yeah, she even has the same color skin as Ganon. So I was, uh, no, but that, that's the thing is that I thought the episode was going to go that route and then mm-hmm. it doesn't. And I don't know if I should applaud it or... Like, slap it in the face for not going a different route with the episode and just going the, the one that is the more predictable and the most expected of it. Um, you know, you know how this show, um, to derail a bit from Tree Hugger, but you know how this show, uh, goes from, uh, has lessons mm-hmm. that are valid for both grown ups and kids? Mm-hmm. This lesson doesn't seem to, doesn't, uh, have any use for me. To be it's... perfectly honest, this is something that I already know. Well, I think kids will get more use out of it, but it doesn't, it doesn't grab me. So I'm sorry, but this is, this is nothing to me. 
I, I am not going to go to you, Norman, and get angry because you got friends with someone who plays the MLP car game, and I don't. <laughs> no, but I, I think the lesson here does work for both adults and kids because mm-hmm. sometimes adults mm-hmm. need a reminder. Doesn't say anything yeah, to me. Yeah, there are some, well, there are some <laughs> immature adults out there. Yeah, I mean, okay, you does you don't relate to this lesson because well no, because you pass needless to remind me of that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's the thing. You pass this thing. It doesn't relate to you because this does not affect me the way it sh- the way it should. Because I as an adult know that I shouldn't do this. So I do not need this. But someone who maybe I'm not saying names, but I got no idea who it to be honest. But I'm just saying adult X probably doesn't know this lesson and once he sees this lesson I can relate oh I'm doing this to my friend that's not fair I should sure. stop it I can tell you I am um, I have never had this many friends in my life I don't know anyone who could get use out of this I, I don't know this is I something more common many to ki- people this yeah, is something see? more common to kids this is something more common with children but mm-hmm. then again my perspective no true, no others. true that true that Silver? Shall we shall we go back to talk with a uh, tree hugger, or do you have anything else to to say about this, Silver? Mm, I think there are there's always a little insecurity when a new person enters a dynamic, and we don't know how to react right away. Mm-hmm. So I could see. Truth be told, this is not one where I was looking for a grand moral of the day. Mm-hmm. Although I did I did think when Fluttershy said, "What if you made a friend who's interested in chaos magic?" Yeah. Her name's Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the, the one thing, though, that's huge about Tree Hugger mm-hmm. is that she's Fluttershy's friend. Mm-hmm. Yes. And don't know if we've, we've mentioned this before, but Fluttershy doesn't really have pony friends outside Except, of the name six. Mm, true that, true that. Uh, and this is, this is kind of huge for her. She, she has made friends with animals, with breezies, with a chaos spirit, but she is so deftly afraid of her fellow pony that uh, the fact she was able to finally connect with one is a big step for her character. Mm-hmm. But Tree Hugger, for me, was not really interesting until at the very end when the Discord's trying to chum up to her and she's <laughs> like, I- I'm going to need a minute because <laughs> you're a tool. <laughs> I like that. That was good. Yeah. I I like that they. I hope they keep doing that in this show. Where oh uh, no, not instant forgiveness. Give me a moment. Yeah. Well, I need I, to I, calm down because what I want to do right now is shove a a, a pot pipe down your throat. <laughs> you got me so mad. Yeah, but I think that's her characteristics where she's calm and cool and well needs more needs time to zen out. And I I think we're missing the most. Um, basics of jokes here. That Mod she, pie. her zen was just so, so thin that even Maud had more character. Yeah, we, Maud Pie, how could we not mention Maud? Can we talk that about Maud for the rest of the, can we talk about Maud for the rest of the year? Please. <laughs> that was wish, wonderful. It was so good to see Maud again. Oh yeah. And to but, actually hear her humor work. Yeah. What humor? Yeah. <laughs> she was actually, she was way funnier than, than Discord and with, and, 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 and Tree Hugger put together. Uh, I think it's Cle- Clearly her personality in the right place works. I mean, when we were first introduced to her, we're putting her in a variety of situations, none of which work for her character. But then you're putting her in this perfect comedic opportunity and she just slotted in beautifully. She rolled it. She rolled I, I it. She think, made that episode. I think the thing that we're supposed to take out of this is timing. Yeah, I mean that's that 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 is something that is that is made that was made obvious to me when I was watching when I was watching this, and Ma delivered that with such a stone face <laughs> on her stone. is that the the way that the jokes are delivered they may not work it, they may not work all that well. And in most of them, they just fall flat. But the punchlines, the punchlines are very good. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, the punchlines I... are awesome. Because if it wasn't for, for Mod uh, going, you are the most basic of jokes. 
that joke completely fall, will have fall, fallen flat, but it doesn't. Mod is the one that sells that joke, the same way that Allo was the one who sold the, <laughs> the, the little bulk biceps cameo yep, in yep. Castle Street Castle. Mm. Oh, I, and I, I, and I, like, I like that this show is starting to rely on the background characters, giving them a little bit of flushing out and also using them as a, as a way to sell the, the, the comedy. Mm-hmm. I think we're forgetting one other thing is the puppet, the sock puppet, the Discord open. Oh, you're talking uh, about the ultimate dimension? Yeah. Well, How we, could we not? Hang on, hang on, hang well, on. What is it, Silver? We had, we had the real life gummy and the real life boneless. I, I, it's a fun to see, but I can't say, oh, that, that's so novel. It's like, yeah, okay, that's still fun. It's still fun. It is, yeah, yeah it, it's like the fourth real life insert that we have had in this show, aside from the I felt, the, the felt pinky thinking and the, um, real life boneless and real life, real life gummy. Yeah. But it moments well, like within, that. within the moment, within the, the, the 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 mm, logic mm. of the episode. Yeah, it, but I think moments works. like that, the moments like this, kind of make me giggle because ah, uh, this is so out of place. It's so funny. Also, the fact that he's called uh, Senor Huevos. Really? Yeah. They named him already. Yeah. No, is that according to Jason Thiessen? That is his name. Ah, <laughs> uh, so good, so good. Uh, so where do we go from here? Because I, I think we almost covered everything. Well, there's I... also the fact there's also the fact that uh, Tree Hugger is continuing the theme of background ponies or one-off characters who actually get to help save the day. Mm. How often does that happen? Okay, granted, I could have done without the sound effect. <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> uh, I, I, th- I think I think Tree will. <laughs> I think free will is um, uh, there we go. You know, this is actually having the inverse effect. I'm getting really pissed. <laughs> your your send leaves aren't aligned, Phil. My send leaves no, my my chi is disrupted. I'm sorry, I couldn't help and, <laughs> and screw this noise. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please continue. Oh yeah. I, d- I was just gonna say the free willy distress sound is probably the only more annoying time. <laughs> oh god, I wish you guys could see my face right now. <laughs> I wonder how is she able to make that noise though, but I love her face. It's like the, 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 the wavy, cre- crazy kind of sound. I don't know. I, she's ador- she's adorable when she's doing that noise. She's adorable. Oh, she- fun fact, you guys, fun fact. The voice of Tree Hugger is done by Nicole Oliver. Nicole, oh, no, that's Princess Celestia. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no way. What? You've changed my perceptions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's and, uh, a hippie at heart. <laughs> oh, but and then, okay. Um, do let me know when we reach the part where Celestia drops the bomb on Twilight, because I have another announcement to make. So please go on. Uh, okay, well, there's annoying sounds, she helps save the day, and Celestia drops a bombshell? Well, I mean, near the end, where Twilight says, I'm sorry, Princess Celestia, I thought I could give you a break tonight, but it turns out I was all over my head. And, well, Twilight, Celestia says that this has been the most fun gala in years. So, who knew that... Princess Celestia likes a little bit of chaos. Um, well, she unstoned Discord for a reason. Yeah, true that. Wink, but wink, no. nudge, nudge. <laughs> and, but... then she, and then she invited a stoned pony. Go figure. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Sandra, if looks like she likes them rock the hard. <laughs> uh, but if you guys remember the line where near the end when Celestia says, "Come on, woohoo, the night's still young." If you want to hear more of that kind of voice out of Nicole, go watch The Little's Pet Shop. She does that a lot with a character called Zoe Trent. Oh, yeah, Zoe Trent. Yeah, that was very Zoe Trenty when she Yes. Said, Woo, come on. I know. And when I heard that, like, oh, that's Zoe. Oh, this is so much fun. <laughs> like, woo, this is so much fun. We are crossing the fandoms. We are crossing the characters. <laughs> don't, don't cross the fandoms. <laughs> 
Oh, cross them all you want. <laughs> oh. No, but um, is that all we need to say? Because I, I, we I have gone, we have gone through almost every single aspect of this episode, but we we have left might be um, a few other you things missed, here and there. You missed Tuesday tea. Tuesday <laughs> tea. Oh, that's yeah. such a beautiful thing. Well, they they have uh, upgraded from being pen pals to being tea buddies. Oh yes, yes. Please. And soon there'll be date night, and after that the wedding. No, no, <laughs> no. I support that ship. <laughs> no. Yes. Rather cord. Oh wow. Disco shy. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, 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 staying alive. <laughs> oh, but no, but seriously, what what else can we say? Because I think we almost covered everything. Um, we should talk about the things that we ended up liking about this episode and what mm. we didn't like and our final thoughts on it because um, I think we didn't make it very clear. <laughs> oh, I, I'm I still kind of so. confused. I, I am confused even about what I think I liked about what I think I didn't like. Okay. Um. So, like like I, like I always, inverted alphabetical order and unlike always, Sugar Dove, you go first. So when it comes down to it, I am a fan of the little details. I loved that it's Tuesday tea. I loved all the jokes. I got most of the references. I loved Maud's one-liners. Just those little, little things that keep your attention really made this episode for me. And to sit there and squee the thought of such as having a cup of tea. <laughs> and the dislikes? I, I wish if they were going to use G1, because I'm a bit old school that I wish that they'd keep something to make it feel nostalgic where it just doesn't it's not holding the nostalgia I wish I wish they'd kept something like even if they just kept in purple just something to make me think oh oh they went back from my generation and they they ruined it <laughs> <laughs> they ruined my childhood <laughs> oh no talking about my generation <laughs> <laughs> and what did you think silver Fun in the beginning, but lost energy as it went along. And, uh, but picked up again at the end. So I guess the thing is that partly it's just the fandom reaction that because it had the smooths, suddenly everyone is saying, oh, this is the greatest episode ever. And I'm like, uh, no, I don't really think so. I think it's fun. I think it's like hard. I think it gives us a view of Celestia we don't often get to see. But it's not my favorite. It's not the worst. It's just sort of there and fun. As for me, I how do I put this? I like the jokes in this one. And how do I put this? The the jokes in here, well subtle or sometimes in your face, they're funny because from how Discord got jealous and Splattershy saying, but we haven't had any of our Tuesday tea cakes and Discord being well okay it's it's way it's bad to waste the cakes so let me stuff them down my shirt and I'll disappear and after that happened the teapot falls down the floor and how he just appears in Spike's bed that that is just funny all those little jokes are there and even to the in your face kind of box. Kojima. Yeah, yeah, Norman, Beauty. Norman. Don't go too detailed. You're okay, going through sorry. the entire episode. That's what no, sorry, <laughs> but it's just those kind of jokes there. They, I smile at them. I smile and I like it. The thing that, well, that I didn't like is the, I want to say the pacing probably because it was, it was go, go, go and come to the gala. It slowed down trying to tell a story and near the end it went funny again. So I think the tempo of the show was a bit off. But all in all, I do love this episode. James? Um, I agree with Silver and Dove. Completely. I agree with both of you guys. It starts great, but then it loses, uh, it loses, it loses, um, wind, as it says. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. I think it has an overabundance of pop culture references that don't work all that well. And even though the punchlines are really good, and I think they are delivered super good, it's one of those episodes that it's saved by the details instead of the whole thing. Um, much like Treja, which is an episode that also suffered from that, 
you can enjoy all the all the details and all that, like the shining, etc. But I don't think it's one of those episodes that I'm gonna go back to rewatch again. I thought it was predictable. I thought it was all a little bit boring. Um, and I didn't think it made that very good use of Discord. And it kills me to say this because John Delancey, man, he he loves every single line that he says. Ah, too bad that the screenplay wouldn't uh, wouldn't back it up. Well, I do like his role here, and if you guys notice, this is one of the episodes where the main character is not one of the main six, and most of the screen time is shared by well, is owned by Discord. Well, I guess the main character, I thought she's still kind of a main character. But... Well, but she's not the focus. Okay. The focus here is mostly on Discord and. Well, his tr- trial and tribulations towards the story. Well, would we really have to bring tribbles into this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying using fancy words. Well, don't, don't, because you have no idea how to. Um, oh. <laughs> oh, harsh. harsh. Uh, but, harsh, yeah, harsh. Sorry, can't help it. I like to be mean to Norman. It's fun. But yeah, I think, I think we are all falling onto the same spectrum. We are all middle of the road. We are in meh country, so to speak. Kind of. It's like, not cold, not warm. I am not mad about this episode, but I am not super excited either. I am just... Eh. Eh. I would give it a yeah. 4 or 5, because I still find enjoying my Wow, that is way higher than I thought. Well, out of 5 game. rating. Out of 5 out of rating, five I will rating. give it a 3, man. 3 is the middle row, it's still You mad, are always but... so kind to every single episode that is put together. Well, I do enjoy it you're, because you. I am super kind about the episodes. You are making me look like a mini head. You are a mini head. Shut <laughs> up! You are a stupid head. <laughs> There's uh, only one I'm... stupid in this area, and it's none of you. <laughs> uh, hey, thank you. I I like being appreciated. Yay! But I do like the end where Pinkie Pie wants to dance through the smooth. <laughs> that that is kind of adorable. Yep. Well, that and hey, I guess that sh- that bears mentioning. This is the first time the ponies didn't react to a non-pony with overt racism. <laughs> well, you say that, but a couple of the ponies fainted when they introduced this moose. Oh uh, yeah, they were also harsh. I just, harsh I just very harsh people. I just realized, and I'm very disappointed. We didn't talk about naked rarity. <laughs> <laughs> They're always naked. How did you not think of that? Well. It was all over. There were comics, there were fan art. Oh, there was fan art. Uh, there were so many things about Naked Rarity, and yet nobody brought it up during the review. Well, what? because... That's Wrong because we thing. see ponies with clothes on every day. Yeah. You know what? Okay, you talk about Naked Rarity all you want. I want to see main style Rainbow Dash. We don't see that often. She was barely in it, outfits. So. Nobody mentioned the outfits. Yeah, like the outfit looks this... nice. We really did a good job on this one. Celestia. Yeah, you do know you're talking to guys, right? I mean, we've got about the fashion sense of a of a brick. I don't True. care about fashion. I wear jeans and whatever t-shirts on the floor. But <laughs> I was just thinking, oh my gosh, Celestia's in a dress this year. The Cutie Mark Crusaders have matching outfits. It was like just these outfits that were classy and not overly, like, overly themed. But well, if... It's a little detail that a lot of people were probably just didn't notice because they were just overshadowed by all these little references. Mm-hmm. And, well, if you want to go to outfits, this court's first comedic act as, well, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> and then Rodney Dangerfield. I mean, I, I enjoyed seeing Celestia in formal wear that didn't look as god-awful as her coronation dress. Uh... That, that frown. But mostly I see it's just... In some ways, this was the the best night ever, Mark II, where mm-hmm. they get to show off how much better they've gotten at animation, at, oh, char- yes. at character design. Oh, the dre- good. The, now, in terms of uh, iconic dresses in the show, the first gal dresses still remain the best designs because they, oh, made, yeah. they made it a point to say, this is our character's personality. Oh, yeah. Wait, did... Yeah, but I mean, do you remember the outfit that Fluttershy is wearing? It took me a couple of ta- a couple of times to realize that uh, her uh, her hairpiece, the antennae of the uh, butterfly, are there. 
And I was like, oh, look at that. That is so neat. I love the design. Hmm. Oh, I want somebody to make that in real life. Make a cosplay of that outfit. It's beautiful. Oh, it'll happen. <laughs> I um, hope so. I'm just trying to remember. Did Princess Celestia... No, Princess Celestia in season one didn't wear a dress. No, that was why I was all excited. I was like, hmm. oh, she's wearing a dress and she looks good in it. Yeah, I, I think they... Yeah. She was uh, receiving all those all, all those ponies naked. Uh, do. <laughs> <laughs> but it shows that the animation crew upgraded and they, well, either they upgraded or they think that she deserves it now. And we need to, we need to talk about the animation for a moment because, yeah, yeah that person that said, oh, the animation has gotten so bad and stiff mm-hmm. and unnatural after season one. Yeah, after the, after this episode and the next episode that we're going to review, the mm-hmm. the Lost Treasure of Griffinstone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right now you you have no, yeah. uh, you have no ammunition to True, load yeah. your gun of bile and bitterness mm-hmm. towards mm-hmm. this show anymore. The animation mm-hmm. in this show is it, it, it it's gotten so much better. Mm-hmm. True that. True that. I mean, look at the way this movie is animated. It's so smooth. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, I don't know. I, mean, the more I don't I know. I thought it, his performance was pretty transparent. <laughs> uh, uh, let's not split hairs over it, please. <laughs> uh, Silver? I've got nothing. I've got nothing more to add. I, just... I'm sorry. We're totally sidetracking you. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh... I, 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 I don't know what to add. Some more, like. Just oh, one more thing I forgot. Where's oh my Luna God. in all of this? Oh, actually, uh, Big Jim made a Twitter post about that, which I don't buy. Uh, but he says she oh. works nights. <laughs> <laughs> so Celestia's gone to parties in the middle of the day. Oh yeah. Well, okay. I mean, I can buy that. I can buy that just because it's explained by the people who created it. So yeah, let's let's buy it. Yeah. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. Well, no d- way. She's in her room playing video games. The same thing she was doing during the during the attack on Canterlot. Uh, Even my sister, who doesn't ever think that uh, the show as much as we do, what she was wondering where the hell is Luna during the whole attack of the Changelings. Uh, true that, true that. But I think there's nothing much to talk about besides us nitpicking and stuff. So oh, don't worry, James... we will figure something out. <laughs> so James, shall we pull this one uh, yeah. over? Yep, true. I agree. Yeah. So, uh, okay, here's where we have to decide what to review next week because we both we have uh we have a three week gap without pony episodes. Mm-hmm. So, uh, not only that, but we are also going to be away. Like Silver is going to take a, a vacation, right? Well, yes. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I am going to be gone from the 14th to the 24th of June. Mm-hmm. So I am not going to be here to record either. It, it's going to be just one weekend, but it's still going to be one weekend. So what are we going to review next? Are we going to review the comics or are we going to review whatever episodes have been released up until that time? Well, um, here's the here's fun fact for people who are listening at home. We may say this now, but by the time you listen to this, it's going to be a regular show. So it's kind of null and void. Well, well, hang on a minute. I thought we were reviewing My Little Pony, not regular show. What are you talking about, Pierre Norman? <laughs> Is it, are, are you I taking didn't know your you guys the regular show? Why didn't you invite me? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're going to review that one, I also I want to talk about Mordecai. I love that uh, guy. I, what I meant to say was our release is not going to stop. Like, when you hear this, it's business like usual. So, don't worry. By the time that Silver finish and James finish with their vacation, we'll be back. So, I say we do it like usual. So, uh, episode review and then a comic review. So, comic review next time? Uh, yeah, why not? Okay, which one of them? Do you want to review the main series comic book? Do you want to review the Friends Forever comics? Or do you want to review... Actually, no, that's about it. We only have the Friends Forever yeah. and the main series comics. I know a fan who's been waiting for issue 29. Okay, shall we review issue 29 of the main comics? 
Yes. Ah, yes. The yes. wrestling. Yes. Yeah. The wrestling one. Okay, well, oh, in that case, so in that case, and we're going to keep this discussion in the episode recording. Yes. Because this is an insight on how we work things out. That is, we don't work them at all. We just, you know, let them <laughs> happen. It. We we wing you it. get phone calls randomly in the middle of the night, Norman going, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> so we are going to be reviewing comic number 29 of the main series, written by Ted Anderson, with art by Jay Fosgit and colors by Heather Breckel. We're going to be reviewing that one, just so you guys know what we're going to be doing. And stuff. Mm-hmm. All righty. All right. Yeah, I think that, that was it, right? Yep. I think there's no more to it. We said I'll keep on the episode. We told the fans what we're going to review next episode. And uh, there's nothing more we can say besides see you next week. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching it, for listening to us, for staying with us up until now. And we'll see you all next time. Thank you so much for coming and have a good one. Bye-bye. Adios. Okay, I'm loving it. <laughs>